Godly Student, Chapter 46, Journey to Mount Wutai. When he entered the room, the old man looked at Cheng Yu and said, Have a seat. May I know your name? My name is Cheng Yu. May I know what's the name of old man? My name is Chan, Chan Wencheng. Old Chan, I think you already guessed the reason I am here today, yes? I fear Mr. Cheng would be disappointed. Old man here will not sell the stone. Does old Chan know what that stone is? No idea. I know it's not an ordinary stone. As far as that stone is concerned, its worth is not inferior to my own life. Oh, may I know if it is convenient for old Tian to tell me the origin of this stone? Tian Wenqing looked at Cheng Yu quietly before replying, Since Mr. Cheng wants the stone, you must be able to tell how unique it is. This old man here shall tell you about it, but I will not be selling the stone. I hope Mr. Cheng will not make things difficult for me from the start. He was able to tell Cheng Yu was not as simple as he looked and not just due to the number of guards around him. This feeling came from Cheng Yu's manners. His speaking style was far grander than a teenager's and normally would only be found in those reclusive old kings, although he was older then. Cheng Yu by a lot in front of him. He felt like a small child again. These kinds of people, regardless of whether he had a formidable background or powerful strength, were not something his antique shop could contend against, despite his antique shop being the biggest in Kingping City and also holding good relations with some officials. He felt that he was powerless in front of this young man. Therefore, he chose to show a softer side and hoped the opposite party would not force him. Cheng Yu was also able to tell what the old man's worries were, and he said reassuringly, Relax, old Tian, since you don't wish to sell the stone, I will not force you. I only wish to know the origin of this stone. All right, I shall tell you about it, Tian. Wen Qing narrowed his eyes and looked out at the window. Twenty years ago, my business failed. I owed a lot of money due to exhausting all my options. I wish to use my death to end everything. At the final moment, I decided to go over to Mount Wadai to seek direction from the Buddha, hoping that he would be able to give me direction instead. When I reached Mount Wadai, I asked for a bamboo slip one and requested Master Zijin to take a look for me. He said this was an inauspicious slip. He advised me to not be too rigid and told me that there were people in my life that I needed to let go of. Old Tian looked as if he was reliving those days. During that period of time, every day, there was people coming to ask for their money that I owed them. How could I let them go? I gave it a thought and decided that I should just die, since death ends everything. Hence, I ran to the back of Mount Watai and prepared to jump off the cliff. When I was ready to jump off, I was seen by the senior monk in the temple causing him to pull me back. After he listened to my difficulties, he spoke to me about Buddha's principles. However, at that point, why would I even care about what Buddha's principles? At last, the senior monk had no other choice but to give me this stone. He asked me to open an antique jade shop and place the stone inside the shop. I skeptically brought the stone down the mountain. Following that, I sold my last property before managing to buy this antique jade shop. After that, I placed the stone in the shrine. Unexpectedly, my business started to boom. After numerous years, it turned into this shop. It was all due to this stone that I was able to stand back up. Therefore, after that incident, every year I go up to Mount Wadai to pay a visit to the senior monk as well as offer some incense and money. Now, do you believe that this stone is more important than my life and properties? Tian Wenqing was somewhat stirred up as he continued. Although it had been 20 years, every time he recalled the incident, it would be vividly clear in his memory. If this stone was not here, he may have already turned into a pile of bones. Old Tian, rest assured, I will never force you to sell it to me. I just wish to know whether or not the senior monk still has such stones. Cheng Yu looked at him and asked. Cheng Yu naturally knew why the stone was able to cause the business to be prosperous. As the proverb said, Jade would assist the person if the person nourished. 
The jade, if the person was able to nourish the jade for more than three years, the jade would assist the person to be able to live in comfort for the rest of his life. As he had placed the spirit stone in the antique shop, every day and night, he would nourish the jades. Even the worst quality jade would be nurtured with spiritual chi. Once the commoner put on such a jade, their face would be glowing and the body would suddenly turn very healthy. Naturally, it would attract a lot of people. I am not. Sure, but this kind of treasure, even if it's just one, it would be like a gift from the heavens. I think even the monk would not be so lucky to have more than one stone. Tian Wenqing replied after thinking. He hoped that he wasn't making trouble. For the monk, when he heard all Tian's words, Cheng Yu smiled. He was able to tell how vigilant he was. However, he also knew that old Tian did not know much about this stone. He must make a trip to Mount Wutai and ask the senior monk. He believed that the monk must have some knowledge regarding these stones. Otherwise, he would not have asked old Tian to bring the stone back and open an antique jade shop. Only allowed on creativenovels.com thinking up to this point, Cheng Yu decided to head back. He stood up and pulled out a pill bottle and took out a longevity pill. Immediately, the room was filled with a pill's fragrance. Tian Wenqing sucked in a breath and felt that it contained the same capability of the immortal. Stone, the ability to refresh and clear the mind. This pill shall be considered my gift to old Tian as a form of thanks from the physical condition of old Tian. Consuming this pill would allow you to live for over 100 years or potentially even longer, Chang. You said... While passing the pill to Tian Wenqing, he had placed the spirit stone here for over 20 years. Naturally, his body's condition would be healthier than most people. Adding on the consumption of this pill, and he should be able to live to 150 years. This Tian Waking was surprised. After he experienced the spirit stone, he was no longer someone who would judge things purely based on their appearance. This pill was obviously the same grade of immortal treasure as his spirit stone. He did not expect that this young man was so magnanimous to be able to gift it to him, as he did not sell him the spirit stone, but the opposite party was actually gifting such a precious treasure. He hesitated. He wondered if he should accept it, take it. Maybe old Tian thinks that you did not actually help me with anything, but you told me the origin of the spirit stone, and this was actually the greatest help you gave me. You can be assured that I am not a bad person. I will not give the senior monk any troubles. After he finished speaking, Cheng Yu ignored the shocked Tian Wenqing as he placed the pill into his hand and walked out of the room. When they saw Cheng Yu walk out of the room and head straight to the exit, Wu Cheng and Dao Jiu followed him as well. Both of them were puzzled. Why did he exit the shop when he did not manage to get the stone? Could it be that they did not manage to come to an agreement? Wu Cheng. Follow me to my car. I have something to ask you. When he saw Wu Cheng was preparing to enter Dao Ji's car, Cheng Yu stopped him and called him over. On the way, Cheng Yu drove the car. He looked at Wu Cheng who was seated in the passenger seat and asked, Do you know anything about Mount Wutai? Yes, Mount. Wutai is located in Shaanxi province. It's one of the big four mountains in regards to Buddhism. It's the Buddhist holy land. Every year, there will be countless people going there to seek divine help from the Buddha. Wu Cheng had no idea why Cheng. You would ask him about this. The holy land of Buddhism. Help me buy an airplane ticket to Mount Wutai. I need to make a trip to Mount Wutai. How about letting me go together with young Master Yu? I went to Mount Wutai before, if young. Master Yu wishes to go over to handle some matters. It would be more convenient with me leading you round. Although he did not know why Ching Yu would want to go to Mount Wutai. He believed that it should be related to the mysterious stone. All right, the earlier the better. Try to come back tomorrow. He had promised Yao Na that he would go over to her place for tutoring tonight. He was certain that he would not be able to make it there tonight anymore, to him. The most important thing to do now was find the origin of the spirit stone. Only by doing so would he be able to resolve this concern. Otherwise, he would not be able to focus on studying. 
Even though he knew that Yao Na would definitely be extremely furious, he had no other choice. Okay. I will book the tickets now. We should just head straight to Yunhai Airport. When he finished speaking, Wu Cheng pulled out his mobile phone and started to book the tickets. Within two hours, Cheng Yu reached Yunhai Airport's parking. During the trip to the airport, Wu Cheng had called Dao Ju over to ask him to drive the car back to their base later. They had to wait until 3 p.m. before boarding the plane. As this was Cheng Yu's first time taking a plane, when he saw the environment inside the plane, he was secretly amazed. Such a big tub was able to fly in the air if this was the immortal world. To be able to stimulate such a big treasure to fly was not an easy task. It would need an enormous consumption of spiritual chi in this world. It would just need fuel to be able to fly. The people in this world are truly awesome. Cheng Yu was seated at the window seat with Wu Cheng sitting beside him. Cheng Yu followed Wu Cheng as they fastened their safety belts. After half an hour, the plane took off. When Cheng Yu looked outside, he actually felt nervous. Is this tub even reliable? Would it run out of fuel halfway and drop down from the sky, as he was not able to fly now? He decided that he must definitely refine a flying sword in the future to play it safe, Mr. What would you like to drink at this moment? A sweet and gentle voice asked Cheng Yu. Cheng Yu turned his head. And he saw a beautiful flight attendant in a red uniform smiling at him. The smile was able to cause the receiving party to feel extremely comfortable. The most surprising thing was her asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Even with clothes on, they were already huge. But what if it was without any clothes? Cheng Yu's eyes brightened up and replied. Are you asking me? Yes, sir. What would you like to drink? The flight attendant smiled. I would like to have milk. Do you have it? Ching Yu looked at her huge asterisk, asterisk, asterisk and said, Wu Cheng. Who was drinking his coffee? Choked when he heard Cheng Yu's words. He smiled. Awkwardly as he wiped his mouth. I'm sorry, sir. The airplane does not provide any dairy products as some passengers are allergic to it. We have coffee, tea, or fruit juice. You can choose any of them. Chen Yu's words caused the flight attendant to be at a loss for what to do. However, after experiencing such encounters a lot of times, it allowed her to be able to handle the situation well. It helped her not to display her anxiousness as she replied gently, Oh, is it? That's truly too regrettable. I thought it could be squeezed out on the spot. Cheng Yu looked at her asterisk, 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 as he said regrettably, Wu Cheng, who was seated beside him, twitched as he picked up the newspaper in front of him and acted as if he was reading it, indicating that he had no idea who the person next to him was. He sighed in his heart and thought, this should be real side of young Master Yu, but where did his arrogant and overbearing side go? I guess Mr. will be really disappointed then. All those beverages I named are not bad, and I believe Mr. would also like them. The flight attendant's complexion did not change as she replied gently, All right, get me a cup of tea then. I hope that the next time I meet you, you will be able to provide the service of squeezing of milk on the spot. Ching Yu picked up the cup of tea and said, This sentence caused the surrounding passengers to despise him, although they had seen shameless people. They had never witnessed such an astounding level of shamelessness before. Being in the same plane as this kind of person was actually degrading their minds. They all felt an impulse to jump off the plane. However, Cheng Yu was not bothered by all these ordinary people as he closed his eyes and savored the tea. This tea was so pleasurable. One, editor note, bamboo slips were basically early forms of paper originating in warring states period China. In this case, the story is referring to a fortune written on a bamboo slip. For more information, https colon slash slash and dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash bamboo underscore and underscore wooden underscore slips. 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 Godly student. Chapter 47. The child who stole a steamed bun. When they reached Mount Watai's airport, it was already 5 p.m. The airport to Mount Watai is not a far distance. Cheng Yu and Wu Cheng took a cab and arrived at the foot of Mount Watai very quickly. At that moment, 
A lot of tourists were descending from the mountain. Only Cheng Yu and a few others were heading up the mountain. Wu Cheng suggested that they should stay at the hotel that was at the foot of the mountain and only go up. Tomorrow, however, Cheng Yu never liked to dilly dally, especially if it's something he felt is extremely important. The earlier he clarified the origin of the spirit stone, the earlier he could get things done. On the way up, Cheng Yu was observing. Mount Wutai's environment, it was not like what Cheng Yu imagined. The place was filled with never ending mountain peaks with short mountains, but it does not have a verdant and lush forest. Some of the mountain tops were even bare without any green. At all, most importantly, the spiritual chi in this place was not dense. This place was not suitable for cultivation to become an immortal at all. Cheng Yu sighed and felt a little disappointed. From the situation, he was able to tell that the probability of this spirit stone originating from here was very low. As he followed the mountain road and walked up, Cheng Yu was not able to feel any rich or dense chi. What he felt was actually the rich and dense Buddhism chi. When he looked at the vast temple buildings, he was able to tell that Buddhism was very popular in this world and had a long and storied history. Ah Chu, Wu Cheng covered his mouth as he sneezed. Although Mount Wutai was not tall, the topography of this place was very high. On the way up, they were able to see those distant mountain peaks were filled with snow. And as a result, Mount Wutai's temperature was quite low as well. Besides, the sky already turned dark. And the cold air had started to get colder. As Cheng Yu had his chi protecting his body, naturally he would not be afraid of the cold air. But Wu Cheng is just a commoner and, in Yanhai, he was wearing a short-sleeved shirt. Since they were rushing over, he did not seem to care about his attire as he did not expect Cheng Yu would actually want to go up the mountain this late in the night. Wu Cheng used his hands to rub his nose as he smiled embarrassingly at Cheng Yu. Ha ha. It seems like this mountain is pretty cold. Cheng Yu took out a pill. Bottle as he poured out a soul-strengthening pill and passed it to Wu Cheng. Eat it. It can help you resist the cold air. Thank you, young master Yu. Wu Cheng said happily as he took the pill. After experiencing the reversal pill's effects, he knew the words Cheng Yu spoke were true. He picked up the pill and gave it a sniff before swallowing immediately. He felt his body started to become warmer as a strand of warm air started to flow around his body. They passed by a temple. Cheng Yu took a look at the Qingliang Temple. Cheng Yu was puzzled as he looked at the vast building complex. Every short distance, there would be a building in between them. Is Mount Wutai not a temple? Cheng Yu asked Wu Cheng, who just consumed the soul strengthening pill and was sighing at the mystery of Cheng Yu's pills, was stunned when he heard Cheng Yu's words. All those tourists who visited Mount Wutai knew that this place was more than just a temple. With such a vast area, it would not be limited to a temple only, but he knew that Cheng Yu had never been here before. Yes. Mount Wutai actually means five prominent peaks. There were a total of five mountain peaks in the area. Therefore, it was named Mount Wutai, as Mount Wutai is a vast area just on this mountain alone. There's already over a hundred temples. What? Over a hundred? DMN. How am I supposed to find a person like that? Cheng Yu was surprised. What the hell? He thought that Mount Wutai was just a name for a mountain and within the mountain there was only one temple but he didn't expect it to be five mountain peaks and each were filled with over a hundred temples how is he going to find the monk who is young master you looking for a monk yes a person called saint master have you heard of him before Cheng Yu asked in anticipation i have never believed in buddhism and therefore i have no understanding towards monks why don't we enter this Qingliang temple and ask the monk in there? Since they are in the same profession, he should know the person young Master Yu is looking for. Wu Cheng pointed at Qingliang temple and said, I guess that's the only way. Cheng Yu looked at the temple in front and walked towards it. Please hold. On a moment, young monk, when they entered the temple, they saw a 16-year-old monk who was passing by, Amitabha. What's the matter? 
The young monk heard the shout causing him to turn around and ask, May I know if young monk has heard before of a person named Saint Master here? Cheng Yu went forward and asked Amitabha. The Saint Master is the senior monk of Philae Temple. He's a revered monk. How could I not know of him? Oh, is it possible for young monk to tell me the directions to Philae Temple? When he heard that the young monk was able to recognize the Saint Master, Cheng Yu heaved a sigh of relief. Otherwise, it would be impossible for him to search all the temples. After Benefactor exits the temple, you should follow the mountain path and head towards the right side. It will lead you directly to the Yufeng Mountain, and from Yufeng Mountain, keep walking to the west and you will arrive at the western peak. Filet Temple is at the top of the western peak. The distance from here to western peak is around 6 kilometers. Benefactor could get a taxi to bring you there. Thank you, young monk Amitabha. The young monk said the Buddhism chant again. It caused Wu Cheng, who was nearby, to be speechless. He's already a monk at such a young age and from the way he chanted the word Amitabha, it seemed he is quite driven to be a monk. Cheng Yu and Wu Cheng arrived back on the mountain path and saw that there was a notice that showed how to get to the Yufeng Mountain. Wu Cheng went to look for a taxi. About half an hour later, they arrived at the foot of Yufeng Mountain. Cheng Yu looked at the summit and said, Find a place to rest for tonight. We will climb up the mountain tomorrow. They found a hotel room before coming out to take a stroll as they looked for something to eat. Cheng Yu did not go into any of those big restaurants, but instead went to some street stalls and bought some snacks to eat. He felt that the street stalls that displayed the food openly were better than the restaurants where they only displayed some of their dishes in a menu only allowed on creativenovels.com the street was very lively during the night. Most of the people were tourists. They were all buying some unique foods and goods and they were attracting a lot of attention while doing so. Stay right there, you jinx, every day. You come to my stall to steal a steamed bun. You think this is your home. At this moment, Cheng Yu heard a person cursing loudly. Cheng Yu looked toward the direction of the cursing and saw a short and fat guy who was covered with a mustache and a white apron who was restraining a child on the floor while scolding her. The child was very small, around five years old. As she curled up and lied on the floor, she used both of her hands to cover her chest from the way the stall owner was scolding and hitting. The thing the child was covering in her chest was the steamed bun, bread, after this beating, let's see if you still dare to steal. The stall owner exerted all his strength and pressed the child on the floor and scolded. The child did not speak as she curled her body and covered the steam bun. When the tourists saw the situation, they started to stick up for the child. Even if the child stole the steam buns, do you need to bully the child like that? When the stall owner heard everyone was criticizing him, he raised his head and stared at these people. What do you all know? Previously, I was kind-hearted enough to let him steal a few times, taking it as pitying the child. But after that, this child came back every day to steal. The most important part is that ever since this child came to steal my bun, whenever someone consumes my bun, they say that they had a stomachache after that. Over the past few days, no one came to my stall to buy my buns anymore. Shay, perhaps the issue is with your buns. When he only stole to buns, it caused your buns to have issues. Impossible. I tried it before. Before this jinx came over to my stall to start stealing, the buns had no issue at all. Today, I will definitely teach her a lesson in the future. Don't you ever dare to come over to my stall to steal my buns, do you? Hear me, do you hear me, do you hear me, reply to me. When the stall owner saw that the child was not replying to him, he got even angrier as he exerted more strength to press the child onto the floor. How could you do this? Do you want to kill this child? When she saw the stall owner's behavior, a woman shouted pitifully, believe it or not, I will kill you as well. The stall owner stared at the woman and said viciously, the woman was frightened as she retreated to steps and no longer dared to say anything. Let her go. 
I guarantee that she will not steal your buns anymore, someone said in the crowd. A teen-year-old youngster walked out from the crowd. This person was Cheng Yu, who was observing the whole incident. Cheng Yu knew that this stall owner was not lying. There's some problem with the child's body. The child's body was actually emitting evil chi. It's very obvious that she was cursed by someone. From Cheng Yu's immortal world knowledge, he knew that this was a malicious devil magic that used an evil spirit incantation technique. The evil spirit incantation technique was a technique that put an evil spirit into the victim's body. The evil spirit relied on the victim's body to absorb the world's chi. When the child was stealing the bun, it caused all the buns to be stained with evil chi. When the customers ate the buns that were stained with evil chi, the evil chi would suck the vitality of the person before returning to the child's body. What made Cheng Yu feel strange was that this kind of curse technique would usually be placed in a body that had a special constitution. He could not understand why this curse was placed into a child's body instead. Cheng Yu had been observing the child from the side and finally felt a strain of spiritual chi coming out of the child's body. How could such a young child have spiritual chi? Cheng Yu was puzzled. After checking out the child's body, he got even more puzzled. The evil spirit was supposed to absorb a person's vitality to cultivate and the evil spirit in her should have already started forming. However, this kid was actually filled with vigor. This was not what he had expected. Although he was not able to see anything temporarily, Cheng Yu brought the child away. Not only did Cheng Yu pity the child, he also felt that the evil spirit should not be kept in this world. It would violate the human laws in this world, you guarantee. What can you use as a guarantee? The stall owner looked at Cheng Yu who was walking forward. Cheng Yu went forward and squatted down in front of the child. He looked clearly at her facial features and realized it was a five-year-old young girl. Her face was filled with dirt, but she had an unyielding look and crystal clear eyes with a powerful spiritual body. Little girl, how about following Big Brother? Big Brother will never let you suffer from hunger and the cold ever again. Cheng Yu said to the little girl affectionately. The little girl did not speak as she looked at Cheng Yu with her big eyes. At this moment, the little girl's complexion turned unsightly as if she was in pain. Cheng Yu immediately passed some spiritual chi over to her body. Cheng Yu knew that the evil spirit in the little girl's body was able to feel the threat from Cheng Yu. It wanted to control the little girl to prevent her from getting close to him, with Cheng Yu's spiritual chi suppressing the evil spirit. The little girl relaxed and looked at Cheng Yu as she nodded. She felt that this big brother's smile was filled with affection. In addition, this big brother helped her to relieve the pain just now. Cheng Yu smiled as he carried the little girl up. Wu Cheng, give this boss $2,000 and treat it as the compensation for his losses these days. Wu Cheng took out 20 red notes and passed it to the stall owner. The stall owner was overjoyed at the turn of events as he expressed his gratitude repeatedly. At first, he just wanted to vent his anger as over the past few days, his business had been very bad causing his temper to turn sour. He did not expect that he would actually meet such a fortunate event today. Godly Student Chapter 48 The Cultivation World When they went back to the hotel room, Chen Yu switched on the tap in the bathtub be obedient and take off your clothes. Big Brother will help you to take a shower. After showering, there will be new clothes for you to wear. Cheng Yu carried the naked little girl into the bathtub and started to help her to shower. What's your name, Ikwan? The little girl said softly. When she saw the bathtub was filled with soap bubbles, she was very excited as she started playing with it. Oh, okay, in the future, I should have the same surname as Big Brother. Your name will be Cheng Keki. Are you okay with it? Okay, Kaki replied happily. After they finished showering, Cheng Yu wrapped the bath towel around Kaki and carried her out of the bathtub. Just as they were about to exit out of the bathroom, Wu Cheng brought in a new set of clothes. When Cheng Yu saw Kaki was happily wearing the new set of clothes, he felt extremely elated as well. 
He said to Wu Chang, the clothes you bought are quite suitable for her, not bad, haha. <laughs> Thanks for young master Yu's praise, my daughter is around the same age as her. So I bought the clothes according to my daughter's size. When he saw the little girl was so happy, Wu Chang's face was filled with affection, as if he was looking at his own daughter. Keki, do you like these clothes? I love them. Order something up to eat. The food we ordered just now, we didn't manage to eat them. Get something that's suitable for the child as well, Cheng Yu said to Wu Chang. At night, Cheng Yu was sharing the same room as Keki. Cheng Yu was not worried about the evil spirit running away as before the evil spirit reached the large success stage. It was impossible for it to leave the host's body. Hence, the evil spirit had to always stay inside Kek's body. Unless the host died, it wouldn't have a chance to seize a new host body. Cheng Yu was afraid that the evil spirit would suck Kek's vitality dry in order to avoid him. Therefore, he placed Keki near him so that the evil spirit would not dare to suck her vitality as it did not have any viable host body to seize, of course. There's a body for it to seize, but seizing Cheng Yu's body, what a joke, if it had such an ability, would it still be afraid of Cheng Yu? Although commoners were not able to tell how powerful Cheng Yu is, as a cultivator, the evil spirit was able to tell how powerful Cheng Yu is, even though it was just an entity without a body. In the middle of the night, Keki opened her eyes suddenly. Her pitch black eyes had turned green. She sat up and looked at the sleeping Cheng Yu. She curled her mouth, causing it to reveal a sinister smile. The small hands turned into a claw as it grew a sharp nail that was an inch long. The hand was filled with dark evil chi as she tried to insert her hands into Cheng Yu's neck. However, when her hands were an inch away from Cheng Yu's neck, she was pushed back by his spiritual chi as she dropped off the bed and rolled. Her green eyes and dark evil chi hands had also returned back to their original state after the fall. Cheng Yu got up from the bed as he went over to carry Kaki back up. He placed her near him and looked at her as he frowned. Cheng Yu sighed as he held Kaki in his bosom. He used his spiritual chi to wrap around Kaki before falling back to sleep. It wasn't that Cheng Yu was unable to remove the curse, but the curse was very complicated. How complicated it was depended on the ability of the person who placed the curse. It cannot be solved within a short period of time and he was worried that there could be an accident happening. From the point he had recognized the curse on Kek's body, Cheng Yu had realized an issue. In this world, there was actually cultivators around. In this kind of situation, it's impossible for Cheng Yu to help Keki remove the curse in such an unfamiliar place. The next day, when the three of them finished their breakfast, Cheng Yu carried Keki as they headed towards the summit. As it was daylight, the scenery was very different from what they had seen yesterday. Under the sunlight, the antique buildings looked grander, causing people to feel like worshipping it. This was indeed a good retirement place that was far away from the city. On the way up, he had been chatting happily with Keki. Cheng Yu always enjoyed such feelings. When he looked at the little girl's small clean face with big, sparkling eyes and a body full of vitality, Cheng Yu liked it. Although he called her his little sister, he always treated her as if she was his daughter. Big brother, look over there. There's a small white rabbit. Keki pointed at the rabbit who was hidden behind a tree and said, after chatting with Cheng Yu along the way, Keki had gotten used to Cheng Yu. The way she called Big Brother sounded very natural. Do you want it? Should Big Brother catch it over for you? Cheng Yu laughed. I want, Keki said as she looked forward to getting the white rabbit. Cheng Yu stared at the white rabbit as he walked over. The rabbit retreated before it started to escape. Cheng Yu waved his hand as he shot a strain of spiritual chi towards it. The she enveloped the white rabbit, causing it to stop moving immediately. Cheng Yu went over and picked up the immobile rabbit and passed it over to Keki. Keki hugged the white rabbit in her bosom and felt extremely happy. She gave a peck on Cheng Yu's face. With Keki around, Cheng Yu was no longer that impatient. He slowly walked up the mountain. After about two and a half hours, they finally reached the fillet temple. It was not what Cheng Yu imagined. It was not domineering. 
but instead was a bit run down. When the three of them entered the temple, there wasn't a lot of people. They saw a monk sweeping the floor. Cheng Yu carried Keki over and asked, Young monk, may I know if the saint master is around, Amitapa? May I know why benefactor is looking for the senior monk? It's unfortunate, as our monk has already stopped receiving any guests for a lot of years. The monk held onto the broom and said, no longer receiving guests. But my friend told me that every year he would come over to greet the saint master. I believe the benefactor is talking about Mr. Tian, the monk said surprised. Tian Wenqing would send a large amount of incense and money over to Filet Temple every year, hence, all the monks in this temple knew about him, that's right, I am a friend of old Tian and obtained some guidance from him, I wish to meet the saint master, I hope that young monk could help me achieve this, all right, I shall bring the few of you to the backyard first. As for whether or not the senior monk wishes to meet you, it would depend on your fate then, the monk thought for a moment before he replied. After that, he brought them to the temple's backyard, devil. How dare you create troubles here? When the few of them arrived at the backyard, a shout could be heard from a room. Afterward, a silhouette fluttered out. An old monk who was wearing his monk attire appeared in front of everyone. The old monk swiped his eyes at everyone. His eyes stopped at Keki as he frowned. The saint master who was seated in his room suddenly felt a strain of evil spiritual chi, and he thought that it was a devil intruding. When he came out to take a look, he realized that the evil chi was emitting out from a little girl's body. He was puzzled immediately, only allowed on creativenovels.com what a malicious person. How could you use such a vicious technique on a little girl? Who are you people? When the saint master realized what was going on in the little girl's body, he turned to look at Cheng Yu and asked, Senior monk, these people said that they are the friends of Mr. Tian. They wish to meet senior monk. At this moment, the monk hurriedly stood out and said, He thought that he had brought someone he shouldn't have brought in and had caused troubles for the monk. Oh, Meng Yuan, you go down first. When he heard the monk's words, the saint master was stunned before he replied gently, Yes. The few of you are benefactor Tian's friends, the saint master. Ask to Cheng Yu and the rest of them, Yes, I am called Cheng Yu. I hope monk doesn't mind. Cheng Yu was able to tell that the opposite party had already felt the evil spiritual qi emitting out from Kek's body. Cheng Yu also found out that the Saint Master was unexpectedly in the Qi training realm. Benefactor has such a strong cultivation at such a young age. You have already seen through the heavenly laws and are near to entering the door of immortality. It has truly expanded my views. Previously, because of the existence of the evil Qi, the monk did not notice that the young man in front of him was actually in the foundation establishment realm. It was totally unexpected. Senior monk is overpraising me, with just a step more. Senior monk would also be able to reach this stage. I shall not keep it from benefactor then. I am already at death's door, this one step. I will never be able to get past it, the few of you. Please come in, the monk said openly, the few of them. Sat inside the monk's room, the saint master looked at Keki who was hugging onto the small rabbit and asked, benefactor, since you have such a strong and formidable cultivation. Why did you not resolve the curse on her? I shall not keep it from. Monk, I just met Kaki yesterday night. Although I can break the curse, it will still need a long period of time. Without anyone protecting me, I don't dare to be so reckless. I see. May I know why is Benefactor looking for me? Wen Ching, you should go out first. I need to talk to the monk alone. Cheng Yu said Wu Cheng, who's nearby, okay. Wu Cheng didn't mind, from the way that they talked. He realized that Cheng Yu was not an average person. He didn't expect the old monk was actually weaker than young Master Yu. Heavenly Law, Doorway to Immortality. When he thought back to the topic they were talking about, Wu Cheng was excited. Is he making friends with an immortal in this world, since monk is also a cultivator? I shall just get straight to the point. Actually, I just want to know, where did you get the spirit stone from? 
When he heard Chen Yu's words, the old monk looked at him in doubt. What's the matter, monk? Chen Yu asked when he saw the monk's expression looked. Very strange. Benefactor has such a cultivation level. Could it be that you don't know the origin of the spirit stone? I really don't know. Please enlighten me. I shall not keep it from Benefactor, but in this secular world, I am afraid it would. Be very hard to find any more of those spirit stones, the old monk replied. Oh, from monk's words. Could it be that it can only be found outside of this secular place? Chen Yu was stirred up by the news in this world. There's indeed a cultivation world. However, he wished to know more about it from the monk's mouth. This, the monk hesitated. Benefactor, may I know who's your master? Has he not mentioned these things to Benefactor before? My master is a spiritual Taoist. He only taught me some cultivation techniques. He did not mention anything else other than that. Up to today, I have no idea where he went. How is it possible for me to know all these? Inside Cheng Yu's words, it contained truth as well as lies. His master was in fact a spiritual Taoist, but the Taoist is in the immortal world. I see. No wonder the benefactor has such a high cultivation, but did not know such things. The monk did not haggle over it and thought for a moment before he continued. Since the benefactor is always a cultivator, I shall tell the benefactor more information about it. It could prevent benefactor from getting in pointless troubles. I would like to ask you for advice then. I am all ears outside the secular world. There's a cultivation world. It's just that no commoners will have any idea about it. Inside the cultivation world, there are a lot of strong influences. Not only are they in the crossing tribulation realm, but the majority of the spirit. Stones are controlled by them. In the secular world, they have strong helpers, and they always send people over to search for spirit stones in this world. Therefore, it's very hard to find any more spirit stones in this world. I see. Does Monk know? The bigger sex in the cultivation world, Ching Yu frowned and asked, he did not expect that the situation in this world was more complex than what he had originally imagined 60 years ago. I made a trip down to the cultivation world. During that time, the sects that were more famous were the Kunlin School, Shushan School, Limitless Palace, Huashan Valley, Netherworld Sect, Blood Demon Sect, and our Buddhism Fahong Temple. As for today, if these are the sects that are the more powerful ones, I have no idea. Of course, among them, there's also a lot of other small sets. Can Monk tell me more details about these sects? Chen Yu didn't expect that in the cultivation world. There would be so many powerful sects. He realized that it's not the cultivation world that's in decline, but it's that they chose to isolate themselves from the secular world. One editor note, as we stated earlier, we will do to character names by separating the characters, but in this case a third character was added on by Cheng Yu so we followed the two word style we used for three character names after the character was added, was added, was added. Godly student, chapter 49, resolving the evil incantation. I'm not that sure actually. I had only been there for several days with my master. I only know that the Netherworld sect and Blood Demon sect are demon sects. This little girl's curse is most likely from them. As for the Limitless Palace, Huashan Valley and Fahong Temple, they usually don't appear in public. Only the other three sects like to do so in the cultivation world. I see. Is it possible for Monk to tell me how I could enter the cultivation world? Although this world is getting more complicated, Chen Yu actually felt even more excited. He always thought that he was the only cultivator in this world. It was to the extent that Chen Yu actually felt very lonely. About it, now, he found out that he actually had so many friends. Although they may become his enemy, this caused Chen Yu's blood to start pumping furiously. Benefactor. I would like to advise you not to step into the cultivation world so easily. That's a world of slaughtering. Strength is what matters there. Although Benefactor has already achieved the foundation establishment realm, in this secular world, you would have no rivals. However, in the cultivation world, such strength is actually 
Very common. I ask benefactor to think twice. Thanks for the advice, monk. However, I must make a trip down to the cultivation world. I need to look for spirit stones, Cheng Yu said firmly. At such a young age, benefactor already achieved such. Cultivation level. Why would you do something that would threaten your current situation? The future is unmeasurable. Is it worth it to sever your own future because of your impulsiveness, monk? Cultivation is all about going against the heavens. Well, if it's just a desire to survive and to take things as they are, and not daring to take risks, how are the cultivators supposed to improve themselves? Wouldn't it cause them to lose their way and cause a stagnation in their cultivation? Amitabha, I guess Benefactor is right. This should be the reason why I was stuck in this cultivation stage after so many years and wasn't able to improve. After I heard Benefactor's words, I have definitely benefited from the advice. Monk is being too serious. Since it's like that, I shall no longer stop Benefactor. The entrance is at Mount Shu and Kunlun Mountain in the secular world. The entrance is being shrouded by illusion. But with Benefactor ability, it's not a problem to see past the illusion. Thank you for the information. Cheng Yu held his hands together as he said sincerely. Although I do not know how many spirit stones Benefactor needs, I still have some. I hope it will be able to assist Benefactor in some way. The senior master took out a spirit stone from his pocket and passed it to Cheng Yu. Thank you, Monk, but I believe Monk needs it more than me. Furthermore, I can find the spirit stones myself. Cheng Yu pushed back the spirit stone to Monk and took out two pill bottles. He extracted a foundation establishment pill and said to the senior master, This is a foundation establishment pill and also a bottle of qi gathering pill. I hope Monk will be able to get past the qi training bottleneck and reach the foundation establishment realm. This, the senior master was shocked. If someone else were to say that Ching Yu's pills were very mysterious, then the senior master would be astonished. When he was young, he had followed his master to the cultivation world. His master had told him a lot of information regarding cultivation. Naturally, he knew how precious this bottle of cheek gathering pills was. As for the foundation establishment pill, it could be said it was almost extinct in the cultivation world. In the cultivation world, not everyone would be able to successfully cultivate to the foundation establishment realm and enter the threshold of immortality in a big sect. A lot of their disciples were stuck at the Qi training realm and no one knew if they would they be able to get past the bottleneck and enter the foundation establishment realm, therefore. They were only able to become the outer disciples of the big sects only when they had reached the foundation. Establishment realm would they be able to formally enter the sect and be able to enjoy more cultivating materials. Although the foundation establishment pill did not have a 100% success rate. If the person was not a waste of a talent, they would definitely be able to break the bottleneck and enter the foundation establishment realm. Therefore, with the foundation establishment pill, it could be said that it would be able to nurture an inner disciple of a large sect. However, the cultivation world had gotten so huge that there's no longer any more genuine pill masters. The pill refinement methods had already died out together with the existence of pill masters currently. There are some big sects that were still able to refine pills, but the pills they were able to refine were just the soul strengthening pill. Those that had better skills would be able to refine the reversal pill. This was also why the big sects were very stingy with giving out the foundation establishment. Pill only. If the disciple was a godsend talent or had brought a big contribution for the sect, would it be possible for them to be able to obtain the foundation establishment pill? That being the case, anyone would be able to tell how precious this foundation establishment pill that was given to the monk was. Please take it back, benefactor. I think it would be better for Benefactor to not take out such precious pills so easily in the future. Especially after Benefactor has entered the cultivation world. Although these pills are very beneficial to the senior master right now, he did not desire them. This could be counted as achieving a firm and steady Buddhist heart. Thanks for the reminder, monk. 
However, I would still ask the monk to accept these. In Buddhism, there's a proverb there is a cause and effect for everything. Monk has dispelled my doubts. This could be counted as the cause. When I give the pills to monk, it will be the effect. This should be karma. If the monk does not accept them, wouldn't it cause monk to mess up his benevolence as well as cause me to lose the chance of repaying my karma? Amitabha, benefactor has such good eloquence, since it's like that. I shall thank benefactor and hope that when benefactor enters the cultivation world, you will be more prudent in handling matters and get what you want. The senior master took Ching Yu pills as he chanted. Monk can be assured. I don't plan to go in temporarily. Maybe I would only do so after a period of time. I shall descend from the mountain then. I will visit you again someday in the future. Ching Yu carried Keki who was seated beside him and stood up. Please wait a moment, benefactor. Does benefactor trust me? Please allow me to perform a protection to help the little girl to dissolve her evil incantation. The senior master stood up and said this. Ching Yu hesitated as the incantation was very complicated. And the evil incantation would also attract a lot of evil spiritual chi. In addition, the evil spirit's host may be controlled by the person who placed the incantation. As he did not know the person's ability, resolving the incantation alone is very dangerous. As he's currently at the Yufang Peak, the surrounding was filled with temples. The Buddhist chi was also very dense. In addition, it was daytime, so it could be said that this was the optimal place to do the incantation. If there's senior master protecting him, the chances of him succeeding would increase by a lot. However, he did not wish to bring a calamity for the senior monk because the moment he was to resolve the incantation here, the person who placed the incantation on Keki would be able to locate this place at that time. Once he left, what if that person came back for revenge if the cultivation of that person was not high? It would be fortunate. But what if that person's cultivation was very high? Wouldn't this place turn into a land of bloodshed? Monk, do you know what kind of incantation she's suffering from? Cheng Yu wished to know whether the senior monk knew the reason why the person placed the incantation on Keki. He can't possibility harm a whole group of people just to save a person, right? I know a bit, I know. What benefactor is worried about? It's precisely as what benefactor had said. There's always cause and effect. Buddhism always taught us to treasure all living things. Saving a life is more meritorious than building a seven-floor pagoda. Since the... Little girl is suffering from this pain and benefactor was prepared to resolve her suffering in the future. How can I turn a blind eye to this suffering if I am able to resolve it for her now? Monk is really noble and understanding. Since it's like this, I will not speak anymore and give my thanks instead to Monk. I will arrange formations around this area to prevent the person controlling the incantation to get in contact with the evil spirit, W. And the moment comes, all monk needs to do is just to stop the evil spirit from escaping away. Okay, senior master turned his body and walked out of the room. Cheng Yu used his hand and touched Kek's head in an instant. Keki fell into deep sleep. Cheng Yu lifted up the white rabbit from her bosom and gave it to Wu Chang who was stationed outside. After that, he shut the temple's doors. Cheng Yu started to form seals on his hand as he recited the secret art. Nine strains of spiritual chi were projected out as they arranged themselves to look like a cage. This would help prevent the evil spirit from escaping and also from contacting the person controlling it immediately. The spiritual chi shot out a dazzling light as it shrouded the room with an illusion. The evil spirit in Kex body most likely felt something, causing it to wake up. Kek's eyes were filled with green light and both her hands had turned into claws with her fingernails turning black and growing by an inch. Kek's small body was encircled by the black evil chi. As it slowly hovered in the air, her green eyes stared at Ching Yu. Ah, Keki let off an ear-piercing shriek towards the sky. This caused Wu Chang to feel intimidated. The voice was filled with mournful pitch, as if it came from hell. It caused those who heard the voice to shiver from the bottom of their heart. 
Wu Qing had no idea about Keck's situation and also for Cheng Yu who was inside the temple. Benefactor. Take these two talismans and drip a few drops of blood on it. Later on, no. Matter what happens, always hide behind the Buddha statue and do not make any noise. Your hand just needs to hold onto the talisman and it will be fine. When he heard the shriek, the senior master wrinkled his eyebrows as he took out a guardian talisman and an expulsion talisman and gave them to Wu Cheng who was trembling in fear. Wu Cheng stuffed the white rabbit into his clothes as he ran behind the Buddha statue while holding onto the tali. Sman, he bit his fingers and dripped several drops of blood onto the two talismans. After that, both his hands held onto the talismans tightly as he leaned onto the statue's back, only allowed on creative novels. Calm the daylight was slowly being covered up by dark clouds. When some of the tourists who were still climbing the mountain saw the sky had turned dark, they ran towards the nearest monastery. As for Ching Yu, when he heard the shriek, he projected out his spiritual chi as he bound her body. He was prepared to use the absorption technique to force the evil spirit out from Keck's body. The evil spirit was bound up by his spiritual chi. It was extremely furious. She destroyed the binding and raised both her hands as she dashed towards Cheng Yu. Because it was Keck's body, Cheng Yu could not use his full strength without any choice. He could only hold onto Keck's hand and use a large amount of spiritual chi to bind her up again. He placed his left hand on top of Keck's head. The spiritual chi in his hand revolved around her as it started to form into a whirlpool. The dark evil chi was slowly sucked into the whirlpool. After her evil chi was sucked away, the evil spirit shouted out in pain. Keck's face distorted as her body started to struggle. At this moment, Outside the temple, the monk was on his guard. The sky had already turned dark. The surroundings were filled with miserable cries. And the place was filled with evil chi as countless evil spirits advanced to the room Cheng Yu was. In the senior, master's expression turned grave. He stretched his hand into his pocket and took out a few of the expulsion talismans and threw them up at the sky while he recited some incantations. The talisman was activated, which caused the flock of evil spirits to scream miserably as they got sucked away by Buddha's light. At this moment, the room was filled with miserable screams. The evil spirits that were outside started to dash into the room ferociously again. They surrounded the room as they continued to ram it. Upon seeing this, the monk took out several talismans again. With a wave of his hand, the talismans were stuck everywhere around the room. The Buddha's light flickered as it wrapped itself around the room. Those evil spirits that continued to run the room were sucked up by the Buddha's light and were turned into nothingness. Inside the room, Cheng Yu had a grave expression as he was sweating profusely. This evil spirit was much more powerful than he had imagined. After absorbing evil, Chi for so long, he still had not managed to force out the evil spirit from Keck's body. The evil spirit struggled violently. The shouts were getting more and more mournful. As for the evil spirits outside, they also responded in an intense way. They were like moths flying to the flame as they continued to run the room. Um, 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 um. Godly Student, Chapter 50, Spiritual Body The senior monk's body shivered as he continued to chant the incantation to expel evil spirits. However, those evil spirits outside the room were not afraid of death as they continued to run the room, causing the sound of ping-ping to echo in the surrounding. While some evil spirits were not able to ram into the room due to the huge amount of others in front of them, they turned and headed towards the senior monk. Upon seeing this, the senior monk reached his hand into his pocket hoping to throw out some expulsion talismans. However, there was none left. He quickly removed his Buddha beads. These Buddha beads were being cleansed with the Buddha's law causing it to be filled with Buddha. Chi. When the evil spirit rushed over, he flung the Buddha beads all over the place, which exercised the evil spirit into nothingness with the continuous ramping of the evil spirits. The spiritual chi surrounding the room started to distort when he felt the instability of the formation. Cheng Yu also felt extremely anxious. 
he released a huge amount of spiritual chi again, causing the evil spirit to shrink in size. He quickly absorbed the evil chi in Kek's body. The evil spirit was extremely frustrated as it continued to try to struggle free. He felt the evil spirit's frustration had turned even wilder. The spiritual chi of the formation started to get more and more unstable. If the formation was broken, the person controlling the evil spirit would be able to feel it. When the time came, he would no longer be able to contend against the evil spirit. Ching Yi started to panic. He coughed out some of his blood essence and swung it into the sky. He let go of Keki and raised both his hands into the sky. A huge amount of spiritual chi gushed out. The spiritual chi started to join together with the blood that was in the sky, forming a big red whirlpool. At that moment, a ping sound was heard. The solar ray was broken, the evil spirit in Keck's body would be able to start communicating with the controller. The evil spirit's powers started to soar. A large volume of evil chi spread out to the surroundings. Keck's green eyes turned even brighter and her fingernails grew to a Length of three inches, the evil spirit roared as it pounced towards Ching Yu. As for the evil spirits that were lurking in the surroundings, they also started to rush Ching Yu from all directions. However, the big red whirlpool started to revolve even faster as it sucked all the evil spirits into it. Because the evil spirit's power had soared and it had Keki as its host body, it couldn't be sucked into the whirlpool at this moment. Chen Yu already found out that the controller was at the Golden Core stage. If he didn't injure Keki, it would be impossible for him to defeat the evil spirit. Chen Yu lifted up his left hand, Hong. Six Phoenix flames were projected out of his hand as they flew towards Keki. The six Phoenix flames encircled Keki. The evil spirit was intimidated as it shrieked miserably. It immediately flew out from Keki's body. However, the moment it exited her body. It was swallowed up by the six phoenix flames. Cheng Yu immediately ran over to catch the fallen Keki. When he noticed that she was fine, he relaxed. He walked out of the broken and tattered room while the whirlpool in the sky was still absorbing the evil spirits in the surroundings. When the evil spirits realized that the main spirit was gone, they wanted to retreat. Ching Yu didn't bother as he shot out another six phoenix flames to kill the retreating evil spirits after the miserable shrieks stopped. Ching Yu was overjoyed as he had removed all the evil spirits looking around. Them, he didn't expect that his spiritual flame would be so effective. If not, he would have started the exorcism by using it and wouldn't have wasted his blood essence. Wouldn't it have saved him a lot of trouble? However, the main reason why Chang you did not use his spiritual flame at the start was because he didn't want to hurt Keki. The spiritual flame was more powerful than Fire Chi. It's impossible for a commoner to endure it. If he had another choice, Cheng Yu would never have resorted to. Such means, because of this, Cheng Yu didn't dare to use it for a long period of time as he was afraid of injuring Keki. However, he didn't expect the evil spirit to be so intimidated by his spiritual flame and escape out of its host body immediately. After witnessing it, although it was only for a short while, commoners would never be able to endure the heat. Since Keki is fine after experiencing that, it could be counted as a fortunate event. He didn't bother giving it much thought as he retrieved the phoenix flames, everything returned back to its original tranquility, monk. Are you all right? When he saw the senior monk's complexion was very pale. Cheng Yu went forward and asked Amitabha. I was useless. It's just that I overused my spiritual chi. The senior monk placed his Buddha beads around his neck as he chanted. That's great. It's all thanks to monk. Otherwise, if I were to exercise the curse myself, I would have invited a calamity. Benefactor is too polite. I only managed to drag out the time for Benefactor. Fortunately, Benefactor has high attainment in a race. Otherwise, I would be too ashamed to face Benefactor. Monk is too serious about this. It's just that the monk's backyard has been destroyed. To such an extent, I am really sorry about that. When I return, I will ask someone to send over some money so that you will be able to reconstruct the buildings. When he saw that the whole place was filled with debris, 
Cheng Yu was embarrassed. It's okay. Benefactor doesn't have to put it into your heart. Monk, there's something I wish to discuss with you, Cheng Yu said solemnly. Please speak, Benefactor. When the evil spirit broke my array, it caused the evil spirit to communicate with the controller. According to my understanding, this person is at least in the golden core stage. After this issue, he will definitely make a trip here. I think it would be better for Monk to leave this place, Cheng Yu said seriously. Thank you. For the reminder, benefactor, however, I will not leave this place. Furthermore, I am already reaching the end of my lifespan, benefactor has said before. The most important thing about cultivation is the way of Tao. It's impossible for me to defy my way of Tao just because I wish to save myself, senior master said in a peaceful manner. If you retreat in such dire circumstances, how is it called defying your way of Tao? Isn't this be asterisk, 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 T? Cultivation is all about defying the heaven's will, as for what will happen today and who will die tomorrow. Why not let nature take its course? Wen Cheng Yu was very helpless towards the monk. He was too stubborn. Even if it's like what Benefactor said, I will still not leave this place. I hope that Benefactor will not dwell on this topic anymore. All right, since it's like that, I will no longer dwell on the issue and hope Monk will take care of himself. If there's any issues, you can come to Yanhai City and find me. When he saw the abbot was still firm in his attitude, Cheng Yu could not convince him and could only advise him to be more cautious. Amitabha, I shall thank Benefactor in advance then. We will make a move first. Take good care of yourself, monk, Amitabha. Very white and pale. At the corner of his mouth, there was blood. The shirt he was wearing was also covered with fresh blood as well. It was quite obvious that he just spat it out. The man clenched his chest. Not only was he feeling angry, but also shocked. Several years ago, when he went to the secular world, he met a baby with a special body constitution. The body's constitution was very suitable for hosting an evil spirit inside it. Therefore, he performed an evil incantation on the baby. Girl, originally, he wanted to bring the baby girl back to the sect, but he was afraid that the moment he brought her back, her body's constitution would be discovered by the sect's elder, causing the effort he spent on the incantation to be wasted. Furthermore, the evil spirit needed to absorb a large amount of vitality from people. If he were to bring her back, she would not be able to absorb any vitality. It would be impossible for him to be killing cultivators everywhere just for her, right? Therefore, it was better to leave her in the secular world. Not only would this prevent her discovery by other sex, she could also absorb a large amount of vitality over there. Since he was able to sense the evil spirit and have a contract with it, wherever she cultivated was not an issue for him. All these years, because of the little girl, his cultivation had soared. He had already reached the golden core stage last year. The sect started to nurture him, leading him to become an elite disciple in the sect. He had managed to receive more cultivation benefits and also the secluded cave he was in now. However. He didn't expect that someone was able to exorcise his evil spirit. What's more, it all happened in the secular world. Could it be his sex secular world disciple? Because he had a soul contract with the evil spirit, since the evil spirit had been exorcised, it had caused his soul to be heavily injured. This injury would need at least two years' time for full recovery. It was already past 7 p.m. Wu Cheng didn't want Cheng Yu to fetch him, so he took a cab back. On the way back, Wu Cheng's body was still experiencing the after effects of what he had seen in the afternoon. This caused a flight attendant to think that he was a recovering drug addict. What happened during the afternoon caused him to be astonished, as Wu Cheng was an open-minded person and atheist. He had never once believed that God or evil spirits existed. However. A few hours ago, he had personally experienced evil spirits appearing out of nowhere. If not for the monk's talisman, he wouldn't even be alive. The evil spirits were too scary. They had a ferocious appearance and produced miserable shrieks. Even the monk was almost unable 
To block them, it was all because of Ching Yu having some extraordinary means otherwise, they wouldn't be able to make it back. While they were on the plane, Kaki woke up. When he saw her playing with the white rabbit inside the aircraft, Ching Yu felt very peaceful. Till when he reached home, he carried Keki into the house. Whose child is that? When Ching Mian saw that it was Cheng Yu who opened the door. She wanted to scold him for disappearing without informing them, but she noticed that. There was a little girl in his bosom so she asked him curiously. Ha ha, she's my sister. Her name is Cheng Keki. Cheng Yu laughed. What? She's a child from your mother. Ching Mian was shocked. Zhao Ming Long, who was seated on the sofa, was also stunned. Cheng Yu's mother had actually raised such a big child. Wouldn't it cause the family to be in chaos? Hey, what are you thinking about? I didn't say that this little girl was from my mother. Cheng Yu was speechless. Not from your mother. Ah, uh, could it be from your dad? Cheng Meiyuan's thoughts were going further astray enough. Keki is a child I adopted. She doesn't have any family. Therefore, I let her become my sister and follow me with my surname. Come over here, Keki. This is your auntie, call auntie. When he saw Ching Mayan was having those strange thoughts, he explained everything to her. Auntie, Keki called obediently. Oh, so obedient. Come over. Let auntie carry you. So it's like that. It almost frightened me too. Death, Keki, this is your uncle. Call uncle, uncle, Keki called Ed obediently again. This caused Zhao Minglong to be extremely elated, auntie. I wish to hire a nanny to take care of Keki since all of us don't have much time to take care of. Her Cheng Yu sat on the sofa and said, True, I will head down to a domestic service company tomorrow and find one. Cheng Mian carried Keki in, said happily, at night. Cheng Yu actually prepared a room for Keki to sleep. However, Keki insisted on sleeping together with Ching Yu. Without any other choice, he could only carry her into his room. As he looked at Keki who was sleeping soundly on the bed, Ching Yu smiled. He covered Keki with a blanket as he sat on his bed and meditated. When he closed his eyes and was about to start cultivating, he immediately opened back his eyes and looked at Keki strangely. When he had closed his eyes just now, he suddenly felt a rich and dense spiritual chi drifting out from her body. Ching Yu tried, closing his eyes and felt it again. He confirmed that there was spiritual chi drifting out of her body. Ching Yu frowned as he looked at Keki for a long time. He finally understood what was going on as he found out the reason as to why someone placed an evil spirit in her. It's the spiritual body. 1. TL Note This is a Chinese idiom. To Ed note, God knows how they got a rabbit on that plane without checking it in law, in law, in law.